Good morning, everybody. This is Steve Singh with Showboat, and it is a beautiful day in Parker, Arizona. We are at the Van Build, uh, 2019 Van Build, and uh, I'll be honest with you, this has been a total mess. Um, the organizers that are doing this uh, have no clue what they're doing. There's no organization. And I'm going to be honest with you, I will never come back to one of these things. What the van build is all about is about helping nomads out here that live and travel with their vehicles, with their vans or with their RVs or their campers. And uh, if you want solar panels installed, you can get that done. And this is the third year that they're having it. But the problem is um, that most people are complaining about is the lack of communication. There is no communication you have to try to find everything out on your own and every time I ask any questions I get the same answer from no matter who I ask and that is I don't know well where am I supposed to go to get my work done uh, I don't know um, what area of the camp or does this kind of work well I don't know um, what time or day are you going to be able to do my work? I don't know. And it's really frustrating. And this is the first year that they've charged. And what it is is you bring the material, you bring the parts that you need, and the labor is free. Well, the first year, the first two years, they didn't charge anything. And this year, they charged $75. <clears throat> and they said that was for for the bathrooms and that was for for the dumpsters well I don't need either one of those I've got a portable bathroom I take my trash in town so I don't need that so basically I'm paying seventy five dollars for the labor of putting the receiver on which I got and uh, I'll show you that and uh, this is the receiver hitch I'm having put on my van and I can put a cargo trailer on there and uh, that'll carry my generator and uh, I can put on the back of a cargo rack and my uh, and my cooler, you know, my boat cooler. So um, it's going to help me out. It is, and it's supposed to be like a 30-minute job. You bolt it onto the frame, but you need about three sets of hands in order to do it. And so far, uh, it's just I've been here for four days now, four days, and I finally finally got uh, in to the welding camp. First they told me the construction camp was going to do it. I went to the construction camp. They were very nice and they said no you need to take it to welding. So I took it to welding and because I went down there I was able to get in Wednesday morning which is two more days. Um, <coughs> so they didn't tell you that until this morning they have a little radio station I guess they bought a FFA license for a couple of days to broadcast over and this morning was the first time I heard that you need to check in to where you're having the work done and uh, in order to get an appointment and they've been saying all weekend long the work order you turned in when you checked in that they will assign those and they will call your name over the radio so you're going to have to sit and listen to a really bad selection of music for um, you know eight hours a day to hear your name called to bring your vehicle in to wherever you're supposed to bring it so I was lucky that I went down there this morning or I could have been here another week or two and um, it's not that it's a bad area. It's, I mean, it's a nice area to camp, but when you're trying to get work done and no one knows anything and no one can tell you anything, you know, it's really frustrating. So this is my last van build. I won't be back to another one. Um, they, uh, it, it's just more. I mean, there's a lot of people here. I, I would say, I mean, just kind of scoping around. We're not even in the main camping area out here. We're like a mile, three quarters of a mile from the Centerville camping area and um, Center Camp camping area. But you see there's a lot of boondockers out here. 
and the Centerville camping area is way off in the distance there. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit and give you a better look at that. But there's a... Uh... All right, we are at the uh, welding area where they're bolting. They're not welding, but they're going to be bolting my hitch on. Yeah. And you see the guy has really done a good job so far. He's fished. He used a piece of my fishing string to thread the bolts through the frame holes. So he's got all the bolts threaded through, so now we're trying to get the frame on or the receiver hitch on. And we'll keep you posted on this. And uh, I'll give you a good example. Um, people that come here to get solar panels installed, they've they've taken their money, they put their work order or they held their work order, and now they have cut off all work orders for solar panel people. They were so over flooded with them and they're not going to be able to get to them all so they stopped taking the, uh, the work requests for them and I was talking with several people here in camp and they didn't know because we just found out this morning you're supposed to check in even though you checked in and registered and they took your work order they gave you a copy of that work order now they're saying you're supposed to take your copy of the work order to the area that's going to be doing the work, which in this case for other people is going to be solar, and they will schedule you. When we checked in, they said that they would schedule you, and you would hear your name over the radio, or they would call you on your cell phone, or send you an email. They had three ways to contact you. And now it's not that way. So I was talking with one of the other campers here that was waiting to get some solar work done. And um, I told her what I found out. So she turned in her work order when she checked in, but she did not go to the solar place because they didn't tell her to. So now she's left to go to the solar tent to see if they can schedule her for work done. So since she's just doing it today, it may be two weeks that she'll be waiting here because the van build is two weeks long and they stopped taking work orders on them. So if people have already signed up to have the solar work done, they may not even be able to get her in at all. And uh, she just got wiring issues that she needs done. So uh, she'll be here two weeks, don't get the work done, and she's out 75 bucks. So that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about, the mismanagement and the unorganization of this thing. It's just... Uh, um, you know, I, I just hope hope something happens to make it improve for the people that have come down here and you know spent their money that were promised work. And uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. And um, you know, I'm not trying to bust anybody's bubble here, um, but when you put on something like this and you have this many people show up, and it's your third year of doing it. You need to have people running it and doing it that have organizational skills. You know, I spent most of my career in management and uh, seeing this is just so unorganized and uh, not seeing anything bad about the people that are running it. Their heart is in the right place. They're trying to help nomads out here to be able to you know live a better life and have more conveniences or whatever but this is um, not run very well at all it seems like they're more interested in having a good time um, you know having campfires and music every night and everybody enjoying themselves and I'm all good with that but the people are not getting their work done and um, it's just um, just unorganized and I just wanted to add that in there that you, you, you know you're taking people's money and they expect something when you do that they expect a service and when you don't provide that service or you make it hard on them or people that didn't plan to stay here for two weeks like me 
Um, I was planning to come in, spend a few days, hang out, see what it was all about, get the work done, and head on down to Yuma. Now, I'm going to be here at least a week, it looks like now, and um, uh, still, just the information is not there. So, anyway, just wanted to add that. All right, everybody, this is Steve singing with Showboat, and we are in Quartzsite on uh, free camping land with the Department of the Interior. And um, we just got in. I'm traveling with a couple of and some friends, and we got a couple more coming in. And um, we are getting battened down the hatches for a major storm, major rainstorm. They're calling for flash flooding. And in Arizona, that is something that happens easily because it doesn't rain for two months at a time out here. And when you're in the desert, you see everything is pretty dry. And you're hoping that We've got a main wash right over here that a lot of the rain water is going to come through. Uh, that's where the cross flooding hopefully will take place. Definitely calling for flooding in all this area, quartzite, some parts of Parker. And um, I'll show you this is behind show that we got my car out and everything covered up. And behind us is the wash. And that should get pretty high. And we're only 20 feet, 30, 20, 25 feet from the wash. But as you can see, all this is dry bed. And uh, this is where the flooding is going to take place. It's going to run right down through here in this area here. You see it's coming between the trees and the water is going to flow this way down and there's supposed to be so much rain they're calling for an inch of rain and when you have um, that much rain in a terrain that's been dry for so long the water will flow. So we hope it's enough for you if the uh, flash floods occur. Now we are camping and there's a group of us here, three of us right now, and we are up on a higher part level ground and we should be fine. Now if something would happen and we need to move, drive up and get up to that higher ground where there's more gravel, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, but you can see off in the distance, the winds have picked up a lot. Uh, the winds were almost nothing, and now they're up to 25, 30 mile an hour gusts, I would say. And uh, you can see the dust kicking up and the dust storms. Um, but that's the direction that the storm is coming in. So, Anyway, this is Steve, single showboat, and we'll be back with you in a little bit when the weather hits, the storm gets here, uh, enjoying life in the desert in Quartzsite, Arizona. Be back with you in a bit. All right, we've made it to the Quaxin or Cuxin. Casino Resort. Already been inside. Texas Hold'em game starts at 3 o'clock. So we're excited. Pretty place. This is in um, California, actually. Winter Haven, California. Right over the Arizona line in Yuma. And Mexico is right across the way there. Pretty cool place. Anyway, we're excited about this. We're going to go in here in a little bit. We're going to let Mr. Amigo out. Come on, Amigo. 
Come on. Come on, where are you? There you are. Where are you? There you he, there he is. He's the buddy boy. Yeah, stretch. I got a stretch. And uh, anyway, we are at the Cukeson Carina uh, Casino and Resort in um, Winter Haven, California, just outside of Yuma, Arizona. And that way is Mexico. Mexico. Yes. And you see there's a lot of campers and RVers here. And uh, we're going to have a great time this afternoon. Texas Hold'em starts at 3 o'clock. I've already been inside. You can play abbreviated hands against the house right now, but I want to play the full table. And uh, so we're looking forward to that anyway. Stay tuned. I'm sure I'll be coming out with my tail between my legs in a little while, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a thrill of a lifetime for me. All right, everybody. Peace out. We'll be back.